hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part 25 of what if naruto was sent to the marvel world remember to get this one to 200 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the new episode of what if naruto was a high schooler and enjoy that guys i also post a new episode of what if Naruto was a god amongst man over an anime king 2 so go ahead and enjoy that guys and I also post a new episode of what if Naruto was banished and gathered all of the Jinjulki so go ahead and enjoy that over there as well guys and remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime king and anime king 2 go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you all for helping your support and remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin this new episode. Start the intro. <laughs> so, the last time we left off, in the heat of the moment, Naruto and Ileana slept together. As, after that, the both of them fell asleep. When Naruto woke up, he was in front of death as she was sitting at the fire. As, she called him her beloved like usual. As she told him why he didn't feel strongly for Ileana. As she told him he's a very loving, caring person. At the elemental nation, it was the same. As when he first met Natasha, she was the first one that he ever came here to love and those feelings haven't went away. That is why he cannot move on to anyone else. As Naruto asked her why is she helping him with this, she told him that she only wanted to see him happy. As Naruto told her that they could be friends, as he appreciated her helping him out. As Naruto woke up as him and Hiliana have a talk, she told him when he looked at her he has this look in his eyes. Like he was comparing her to someone that she couldn't be, and she could not be that person. As Naruto felt rejection, as it was cold and hurt a lot. Some time passed after that, as both him and Ileana were searching for members to recruit into their new squad. On the bus, things were really awkward, as the both of them needed this time to pass over their mistake and become friends once again, because if they don't, they won't ever become friends. As they found the person where they're looking for, Owen Reese, as they asked him to join them, the man had come out of jail some time ago. As in jail, he told them about his ability to make things for a lot of the people in there and he get rewards. But he said once he come out, he wouldn't be anyone like this again. But Naruto told him he can help him to control his power. The man told him that the FBI is watching him and also he had a job. But Ileana said that they have a benefactor and they don't have to worry about money. As Naruto said that he would deal with the FBI, the man told him under those conditions he will join them. As a month then passed after that. As Rogers and Steve was at the meeting waiting for Naruto as they haven't been called in yet. Naruto then arrived but he was just a clone. As Steve asked what is the real Naruto doing. Meanwhile the real Naruto was at Sokovia as he was facing off against heavy military man. They realized they couldn't stop Naruto so he sent out two people to try and slow him down. As Scarlet Witch and PHO came out. As Naruto started to battle the two of them, as Scarlet went into his mind, as she came face to face with Kurama, she was shocked. As she was trying to force herself out of here, as Naruto realized she was using cosmic energy. As she did something wrong, as she started seeing Naruto memories, every single thing in his life, as it went by so quickly, but she got all of them. As she was quite shocked and asked him how, how could he figure that man who killed his sensei? As Naruto told her about the hatred cycle and that he need to be the one to break it. She also had a grudge against Tony Stark as she could not forgive him for what he did. But Naruto told her that someone has to break the hatred. She then left his mindscape after that. And she told Pietro no, it's time for them to go. And with that they left as Naruto arrived. As the man inside was shocked to see he got here so quickly. As Naruto asked him where is Loki's staff. 
as a doctor, say that Naruto doesn't understand what that power can grant them to experiment on when Naruto blew a wind bullet right through his skull. As the other man quickly said, fine, he would bring him down here himself. So yeah guys, that was basically the last point we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it for yourself, so let's begin this new episode. It, it, it's in the laboratory, I'll take you, the Hydra agent choked out. As, Nerd turned around to the other man. Don't you guys go anywhere, he said, as he gave him a sweet smile. As all of them quickly nodded, knowing the threat behind those words. As Nerd follows Strucker over to a wall, as Strucker placed his hand on it. As the wall then sink in and open up. As they went inside, Naruto eyes went wide. How did you manage to get a Leviathan? As Naruto started to wade like warship tied up above them. Below it, the lab station was filled with several incomplete robot limbs and mechanics. Walking over to the nearest table, Naruto picked up a metallic head, its blue eyes glowing in a dimly lit room. We build this section over the fort of the creature. We've been using his armor as resources. As Naruto placed the head down, he heard a humming coming from the side. As he saw the scepter, as a force field was around it, electricity. As Naruto held his hand out, he used magnet release. As the scepter flew towards him as he caught it. As he looked at the gem at the base. The intelligence you found. Do you want to know where it came from, Naruto asked. Strucker looked at the man curiously. You know of his origin? Yes, this scepter was given to Loki of Asgard by a man I doubt you ever heard of. To Loki, it was a sign of trust. For the man, it was a sign of doubt. He knew without the scepter, Loki would fail. His mission to dominate Earth. In the end, he failed anyway and two infinity stones fell out of his hands and dropped to Earth. And they fell right into my hands. Infinity stones, Strucker said. This jewel is meant to hold the power of what it holds. The power of the mind stone. That's the intelligence you found, but only a small margin of it, if I must say. Jesus, Strucker said, sweating at the thought of what he had. As he couldn't believe he held an object of such power without knowing it, the things he could have done. Naruto gripped the jewel as he pulled it from the scepter. In a poof of smoke, the jewel was gone. As he grinned, now all I have to do is seal it like what I did the rest, he said. You can do that anytime, Kurama said. Remember, you're running late to that meeting. Crap, Naruto said. As he quickly created a shadow clone. There, that should cover me for a bit. I should drop the stone off at Stark Tower, though. I promised Tony I would make him get a good look at it. I can't believe you're letting that monkey look at something like a goddamn infinity stone Kurama growled out in annoyance. A smart monkey is still a monkey. Give him a stick and he's most likely to use it to poke himself in the eye. Ah, oh, come on Kurama, I said he could look at it for a week to see what made it tick. What's the worst he can do? Tony may be a monkey to you, but to me, is as smart as they come. Him and Bruce should be able to get something useful from it. It's a win-win. Kurama scoff, I know exactly is this a win-win. Simple, they get to look at something cool from space and I get them off my back for me having two, now three, mass destruction objects in my pocket. I know I don't have to, but I need allies. Strucker started to slowly walk away seeing that Naruto was distracted. As, he then turned, but he then bumped right into Naruto. How did, as he looked behind him, Naruto was gone. Fine, I give up, Strucker said, raising his hands. Huh? You thought I was going to arrest you, Naruto said. But, but you're an Avenger. You don't... I am not an Avenger, Naruto said. And you lost my sympathy after I found out what you guys were doing here. There are a lot of things on the shitty list I'll forgive. But human. Experimentation. No, no, no. Before Strucker could say anything, Naruto drive the scepter right through the man's chest. As Naruto grabbed him before he could drop, you and everyone died. The moment I learned your address, it's just that you had a little more time. As Naruto twists the blade, as the man's eyes rolled over as he dropped dead. Hey Kurama, how would you like to stretch your legs a bit? God damn it kid, you know you spoiled me Kurama said, as he sounded happy. Present time, Washington DC. Naruto blinked as he did a quick switch with his clone, as he looked around. What did I miss he said. Tony and Steve looked at Naruto in confusion, what? As Stark noticed that he wasn't wearing the same clothes that he was wearing before. Naruto coughed, I'm the real one, you know, me. As Steve looked at Naruto curiously, how did you do that, he asked. If I answer that, can you tell me how you get the shield to come back to you, after you bounce it around? Hmm, fair enough, Steve said. Tony then answered Naruto's original question. We've been sitting around where to be called in for the last 30 minutes. So to answer your question, you miss nothing. 
As Nerd looked at his clothes as he noticed he was wearing the same clothes when he was going through his raid. As he went through his clone memories, as his clothes then transformed on him, turning into the business suit. This proved to be just in time as the door opened to reveal secondary rods coming through. Walking beside him was a pudgy man as he was shorter. His hair was slipped back as he was well groomed, a thick beard on his face. The three got up, Steve and Tony shaking the other two man's hand. Rogers was the one that spoke, Sector and Ross. Director Norris, he greeted. Ross nodded along, Captain Rogers, he said. CIA Director Norris took Tony's hand. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sorry for the wait, Ross said, with his eyes on Earth the entire time. We ran into a mishap. Mishap, Steve said. As Ross still had his eyes on Naruto, there was a blimp in Sokovia. When Naruto didn't waver under his gaze, he turned to the other two. Well then, follow me, he said. The three followed after them as they were led into a conference room, as there were two others in there. Ross decided to introduce them all. For those of you not familiar, this is Director of National Security, Douglas Chapman. He motioned to the man sitting on the left. He gave a small smile as he stood up and shook the three of their hands. As he looked over to the other woman, and this is Agent Jessica Drew of the CIA. I am sure Captain Rogers and Mr. Uzumaki are familiar with her. Jessica remained seated but she gave the both of them a nod of acknowledgement. The three heroes took a seat as Naruto was in the middle with Tony to his left and Rogers to his right. Ross cleared his throat before he began. Before we get started, I think I should explain why we were forced to make you wait. You mean the little mishap said Tony. Yeah, we know who you were talking about he said. As Chatman then cut in, were you aware of his intention to raid the Hydra base? Obviously not, Tony said. More than likely, we would have helped him out. That is why he didn't tell us. He told us after he showed up. We had no clue it had happened till then, Steve said. Did you have any clue that he planned to wipe it off the face of the earth with whatever that he did? Director Norris asked. Seeing their confusion, he flipped towards the television and side wall as he turned on and went to CNN. On the screen, a reporter could be seen as she was standing in a war zone around 30 minutes ago from eyewitness reports and the assumption made. Many has come to the conclusion that the Avenger, Maelstrom, is responsible for the attack happened here. Why or who he is fighting is very unclear. But it's clear that he attacked the old castle in Nova hillside. That castle is now completely gone after it was attacked by Maelstrom who took the farm of a giant nine-tailed fox. Please stand by for more information, we're getting more as the minutes when the man shut off the TV. Norris then spoke, so what exactly were you after, Mr. Uzumaki? As Tony answered, we already told you he was raiding the Hydra bit, but Tony was cut off. I'm sorry Tony, Ross said. But I'd like Mr. Uzumaki to answer. If we want your opinion, we will ask for it. Naruto sighed, I raided the base because they had something I wanted. Originally, all I wanted was to get in and go. But then I realized they've been using the thing I wanted to experiment on the people. So I blew them straight to hell. Chapman then leaned in. What exactly were you looking for? Loki's scepter, Nurta said. You received the scepter? Nurse asked. Yes, Nurta said. And where is this weapon now? Chapman asked. With Dr. Banner over Stark Tower, Nurta answered. Ross laughed to himself. You gave a weapon of mass destruction. To another weapon of mass destruction. Nerta shrugged. Well, I took out the mass part of the destruction, so it should be fine. This confused everyone in the room. What? said Steve. I took out the thing that made it dangerous, Nerta said. And what do you do with the thing? Ross asked. I gave it to Dr. Banner, Nerta said. Don't worry, without something to channel it, it's just a really smart rock. All anyone can do is study it to see how it takes. Tony asked me if he can get a look. Everyone turned towards Tony. As he sighed, thanks kid he said. You're welcome Nerta said. Well, I have perfect confidence in Dr. Banner abilities to not use a weapon as a mass destruction tool, Tony said. Besides, if the kid is right, there is not much he and I can do without a quick once over. So, loosen your buttholes please, Tony said. Ross sighed. What exactly is the thing that powers it? I will feel more safe and secure if you tell us that. Naruto sighed, look, why don't you just get down to it and tell me why you brought me here? Fine, Ross said, but first, I think Director Chapman has some questions for you. The man opened the banner that was in front of him as he started to read. Mr. Uzumaki, this is not an official inquiry. You are not being accused or charged with any crime that you have committed. 
in the seven years you have been on this planet, four, four, not to say, I was gone for three years. In the four years you have been a resident on this planet, the man corrected himself. We simply wish to iron out the timeline of your time here and get a dialogue between us that lead to a good relationship to both sides. Is that understandable? I understand, Nurta said. Good, Chapman said. But my first question for you is a little out of order, but I'm very curious in your answer. Okay, Nurta said. The man nodded. The alien you fought a month ago, the man who dressed himself by Dizak, when he arrived he called you another name, Celestial. What does that mean? Oh, that Celestial are ancient race of beings that are able to manipulate the galaxy themselves. So basically, gods. The room went extremely quiet at that. Eventually, Chapman finally spoke again. I, I see, he said. Everyone seemed to look at Nerd in a new light, but if it was good or bad, that remained to be seen. Norris then spoke for the still stunned Chapman. Let's get to the iron out of your history here. Right, what do you want to know exactly, Nerd asked. Shield records show that you landed on Earth at 2. 23 p.m. April 3rd, 2008, in Kathmandu, Nepal. You were recovered by Kathmandu paramedics at 3.09 p.m. and immediately taken into emergency care. The doctors that work on you said that your body was healing itself at amazing rates. The next day, she was sent to find the amazing phenomena, but they failed to receive you. The hospital said that you disappeared. Then suddenly you disappeared in Tonsberg. On July the 14th. That's over three months of undocumented time, Mr. Uzumaki. Where were you in that time, Ross asked. I was taken in by a monk and their disciples. They helped heal me, taught me your language and your history, and showed me where to go to get home. And where are those monks, Chapman said. Nurta shrugged. I don't know, he said. Norris looked at him. You haven't kept in contact with them in the seven, four years, he said. I find that hard to believe, he said. Well, I don't really care what you believe, Nerta said. They don't matter. They don't need to be disturbed anymore. And that is all there is, he said. Let's move on, Chapman said. After you met up and ally yourself with S.H.I.E.L.D., it is fairly easy to follow where you were and what you were doing. But on December 11, 2011, you dealt with members of Simcaria. You assassinated several government heads that were responsible for the revolution in the first place. Then after that you attack an AIM facility where you kill several of the people that were working there. On that day your death toll for the day was 239. Is there a question in there? Tony asks. Were you aware that the United States has invested interest in the Simkarian revolution? Specifically, the revolution aside, said Ross. No, Nerta said, I was not. Were you aware by upthrowing the revolutionists, you upplanned several years of military time? That you upset a carefully laid plan that would have given us a strategically advantage in that area, Ross continued. So tell me, why did you feel the need to mess with the US government plans? Nerto went silent for a few seconds. I was ruining your plans, he said. I wasn't making a move against you or Simcaria or the revolutionists. I wasn't making a power grab or moving peace around the chessboard. I was simply saving a little boy from a situation I put him in. Everyone I kill or everyone I hurt, that's because they got in my way. They're responsible for their own misery. If I step on your toes, I didn't mean to. I was just putting people down that deserve to sit in the dirt. Ross looked Nerta over, but to do so, and not ask for clearance or explain her, but Nerta burst out laughing. As everyone looked at him with confusion, he simply laughed some more. As he calmed himself, you seem to think I have an obligation to explain myself to you. You seem to think that I work for any of you. Or that you're above me. I can tell from just how you talk to me. And it's not that you're arrogant. You just honestly believe that you have some kind of command over me. You rule over a chunk of this planet. Your flag doesn't cover every edge of the map. No matter how much you think it does. If you did. If your borders did branch over the entire planet. Like Hala or Xandar. Then I would understand why you think you could tell me what to do. I would actually like the idea. Because this planet took me in and helped me get on my feet. I will always love Earth because of that. But you don't have any kind of pull on me. I didn't land in your country and get adopted by some farmers from Kansas. I land in Asia and I got help from a super spy agency. Whose allegiance were to the entire planet, not a single country. 
My only connection to your country is that most of my friends are from here. That said, Nerka said. As everyone looked at him stunned as they were silent. As Ross was the first to get over Nerka's monologue. Perhaps we should move on, he said. Right, said Naruto. Let's move on to the real reason I'm here, he said. Tony told me that you don't want me to step on your toes anymore. And you don't want to step on mine, Nerka said. Yes, Norris said. I think after what you just said, you'd rather keep to yourself, but still, allowed relatively freedom from government control, am I correct? Yes, Nerta said. Sadly, Ross said, that kind of freedom isn't something that can happen. You are an alien here, a guest, whose welcome is running thin. You kill easily, and if not, you beat them with an inch of their life. You use massive destruction abilities, and use our country like a rest stop whenever you want to take a break from breaking the countless laws we let slide. Due to your relationship with both S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers, however, S.H.I.E.L.D. has disbanded and you have declined any allegiance to the Avengers on numerous cases. That leaves you in the wing. That is something we cannot allow. Chatman then intervened. You have to understand our perspective. You're not someone we can allow to roam around freely with zero supervision. Your abilities make you perfectly inclined to decimate everything that makes this world run. Political power, military economy. You cannot ask us to trust you when all that keeps you from destroying the world is your mood. No, hold on a second, Steve said. Naruto would never set out to destroy America. How can you promise that, Ross said. How can any of you promise that? No one can predict the future right now. He's a neutral party. Two, three years from now, we can be on opposite sides. And I don't like our odds, that is why we call this meeting. To try and set ground rules in place, to try and reach a mutual understanding. An agreement, he said. And how exactly do you propose we reach an understanding, Nerta asked. Ross gave Nerta a careful look. I understand you're forming a team. Why? You were probably going to ask about the years I was gone, right? Nerta said. Yes, the man said. The reason I left, because after the New York incident, I talked to the guy that was responsible for all of this. Chatman nodded in response. Loki, he said. No, Narta said. The guy who sent Loki, his name is Thanos. Short version is, his mission in life is to find sticks, infinity stones. The reason he had Loki invaded Earth is because the Tesseract that was being studied by S.H.I.E.L.D. was in fact one of the infinity stones, the space stone to be in fact. I used that stone to get back to my home. After I did that, I traveled around space trying to find clues on the other stones. I managed to find one more before coming back here to fight Dizak. And it was in space that I learned that Loki Scepter held an infinity stone. Which is the reason for the raid, Norris said. Naruto nodded, I have no three of the six. I formed a team to help me find and protect the stone from Thanos. What happened if Thanos get all six of these stones, Chapman asked. Don't know, that is what scares me. He can literally do anything with them. Where are you keeping the other stones, Ross asked. They're in a safe place. No one can get to them but me. Ross scoffed. How can you be sure that? Trust me, Nerta cut him off. It's literally impossible for anyone to get to them but me. I am the last of my people. There isn't anyone else that would know how. Ross raised an eyebrow. You're the last of your kind? Yes, Nerta said, as this eases his mind a little bit, knowing that there weren't any more around like him. So, Tony said, why do you care that Nerta is forming a team? Ross straightened up at that. You need official representation from Earth. To make your life here a little smoother. If I know that you have someone we trust with you, I won't continue to hunt you and your many, many, many mishaps. They will be inclined to inform me of them. That gives us time to react. Along with giving us a direct line to you. So, you're spying, Erta said. If you like to put it that way, then yes, Ross said. Steve raised the eyebrow. It's a little odd you're so forward in want to place a spy in Erta ranks. Ross gave a smile. I've been warned several times. Not to try and make a fool of this man. And I pride myself to learn from mine and other mistakes. Who do you have in mind, Steve adds. It was then that Agent Joe stood up from her seat. That would be me. I'm sure you're aware of her abilities, Captain Rogers. You too, Mr. Uzumaki. Nora said, get a nod from Steve and Naruto. Yeah, well, I'm not, Tony said. Mind filling me in? Agent Jessica Joe has been gifted with several abilities. Because of complication with her birth, Nora said. Enhanced strength, speed. Flexibility, senses, and agility. She's also resistant to poison, toxins, and radiations. Her hands and feet are able to release a fluid that allows her to cling to solid objects. Along with all of that, her body produces 
a lot of bioenergy, allowing her to discharge it from her body. On top of these incredible gifts, she's adept to hand to hand combat and weapon use. She's our top field agent. As the room went quiet, as Nerta realized they were waiting on him to reply, as Nerta eyed her, What do you think of all of this? he said. I think you need a buffer between you and the government. And I can be that buffer, she said. Fine, I accept, Nerta said. Wait, Naruto. But Nerta cut Steve off. Wait. But here are my rules, Nerta said. I can come and go from this planet whenever I please. I don't have to tell you where I'm going or for how long. Second, Infinity Watch is my team. We don't work for you or Earth or the Avengers. Third, if I ever catch you trying to use my team to advance you or your county's goals, we're done. Fourth, she can tell you what I'm doing. She can tell me if you don't approve. And she can report to you. If I do something she don't like or you, hell, she can try to arrest me. But she's a part of my team now. She doesn't do missions for you anymore. She works for me. And by her, I mean only her. I don't want my team to be the new government hangout for new strong agents. And fifth, anyone I choose to be on my team is under my protection. That means people like Owen Reese and Jennifer Walters aren't people for you to watch out for or worry about. They're mine, Nerta said. They've joined your team, Chapman asked, as he started to write the names down. Well, I'm scouting them, Nerta said. It's a progress. Are there any more rules you like to make, Ross asked, as he was holding in his frustration. None that I can think about right now, but I'm sure I'll think about something, Nerta said. We will have to go over this more, but we will get back to you when you come to our agreement. And when we come up with more rules of our own, Ross said. We will send Agent Joe your way when we do. As Nerd and the others got her from their chairs, is that it, he asked. Tony pat him on the back, he asked, that's it. You got less angry than I thought you would, Tony said. Thanks, Nerd said. Meanwhile, on a cliff side, shall I call for him? Yes, it is time, I cannot postpone it for longer than I think. A female voice and spoke, I know. I know that this is difficult for you. I have made many, many difficult situations when it comes to my children. It's not that hard to do, the elderly man said. This must be done, my king, the female voice said. I know, bring him to me. At once, she said. Meanwhile, so explain to me why you're allowing this spy on your team, Clint asked. As the group was waiting on Tony and Bruce's arrival, Steve has decided to stay in DC. Because, Nerta said, I need to make a compromise. It was either allowing her to be on my team or tell him to screw off. But they would probably do something drastic in retaliation. I know I can handle any of those situations, but the last one is really annoying, he said. But she's going to be reporting your entire team, strength and weaknesses, how to beat them, and you as well. She's going to be writing down every law you break and every person you screw over. She will have a laundry list on you a mile wide. Doesn't that bother you, Clint asked. Nerta chuckled, don't worry, I'll handle all of that. If you say so. I was told to ask you if you want to come over for dinner. The missus is making that thing you like. As Naruto gained a smile on his face. Ramen? What? No, meatloaf. How old are you, Clint said. I like meatloaf, Nerta asked. Well, she made it for you the last time you were over, and you wouldn't shut up about how amazing it was. You literally made her weep. Look, as long as you give a repeat performance, I don't give a crap if you remember or not, he said. Nerta Chuck is sure, I'll come over. We can carpool to your place. You have a car? Clint asked. Didn't I tell you about my spaceship? Your what? Clint said. My spaceship, Nerta said. She's called Kushina. Clint stared at Naruto to see if he was joking. Oh, okay, he said after Nerta didn't say anything. Tony and Bruce then walk into the room. What is this I heard about a spaceship? Bruce asked. That I have one, Nerta said. I can take you out for a spin if you want. Definitely gonna have to put a bookmark on that one, Tony said. I think we're gonna be busy looking at this gem for a couple of weeks. First, they're called Infinity Stones. Second, we agreed to one week. And I'm gonna have a clone on standby to come by and pick it off and drop it off the others. So don't bargain for any spare time, Nerta said. Right, my bye, Tony said. Where's the stone anywhere? Right over here, Banner said, as he motioned towards the table in the lab. As a jewel, the glowing rock was on a strange looking stand. Whoa, Tony said. This is a mind stone, Nerta said. The power lies in the mind. It is literally intelligence. In its diluted state, in the scepter, it can control the mind and make your average Joe as smart as you are, Bruce. If you were to take out of a jewel and touch it, it would drive you insane from the overload, though. 
You'll probably learn the meaning of the universe, but it will be too much for you. That is why I left the stone inside so you can analyze it. Without having to waste time coming up a way to contain it. This is incredible, Bruce said. How will you be able to contain it when you take it out? The engine you see me use let me hold and control the stones, Nerta said. I managed to learn how to hold off their power, but other than that, my control is really shitty, he said. That's one of the reasons I don't like to use them. Makes sense, Banner said. As he kept on looking over the stone. I can't believe you have two more of these lying around somewhere. Clint said as he analyzed it from a distance. Out of the three of them, he had the most experience with it. Naruto made a shadow clone as he looked back at Tony. What are you planning to do with this again? He asked. I just want to see what makes it tick. If you say what about it is real. It can be a boom for several things I have in storage. One in particular coming to mind. Nothing nefarious, I hope, Nerta said. Look at who you're talking to, Tony said. Have I ever done anything nefarious? Underhanding. Come on, man. Alright, kid, let's go, Clint said, as he put his hands in his pockets. Right, Nerta said, as he followed after the archer. Hey, don't stay out too late on your date, Tony said. Why don't you go join your science bro and look back at the rock? Clint shouted in annoyance. Bruce looked up from the stone. Do people actually call us that, he asked. As everyone chuckled as the other two left the room. Time skip. Wow. Just wow, Clint said. As they were currently in cushion as they were tearing through the sky. Yeah, Nerta said. She's something else. And you got this from a space pirate, Clint asked. Pretty much, Nerta said. Awesome, Clint said. Can I fly her? Nerta chuckled. No chance in hell. Oh, come on. I let you fly the Queen Jet the first time I took you out on it. Return the favor. Let my ass, Nerta said. You forced me to fly it as some stupid kind of test. Stop being such a brat, Clint said. I will, when you stop being such an asshole. Clint then relented in annoyance. Just take us to the farm, goddammit. I'm hungry, he said. As Naruto grumbled, but he relented, as he won that argument. As they finally reached, as Naruto brought down the ship. As they descended, Naruto noticed the Queen Jet a distance away. Who else is here, Naruto asked. Well, Clint said. Clint. Who is here, Nerta asked. But before Clint could say anything, his two children burst out of the door as they rushed towards the ship. As Nerta opened the back as Clint ran out and greeted the two children in the hug. Eventually, they noticed Naruto as they let go of their father as they ran up to him. The oldest, 11-year-old Cooper, reached out for a high five. Lila, who was at the cute age of six, wrapped her arms around his left leg in a tight hug. Uncle Naruto Lila said, You're back! How long have you been back? Cooper asked. Where did you go? said Lila. I heard you went in his face. Did you go to Mars or something? Did you make friends with any merchants? I bet you did, but Cooper say they aren't real. They aren't real, Cooper said. R2, are not, R2. As Nerta cut it off, I've been back for a couple of months, he said. And no, I did not go to Mars. But I did meet some cool aliens in space, though. As Lila got stars in her eyes. Whoa, really? No way, Cooper said. Yeah, way, Nerta said, this guy was made of ice, and another one was a walking tree, and he was also a talking raccoon. As Lila, ooh and ah, as Cooper looked at Naruto, you're making that up, right? Would I make something like that up, Nerta asked. Yeah, you made up a story about you fighting a knight over a rock, so yeah, Cooper said. Nerta lowered his head in defeat, no respect, he said. Why don't you guys give Nerta a little breathing room? I am sure he can convince you that he actually met a talking raccoon. A voice said from the house. As Nerta looked over to see Laura exit from the house. As she cradled her stomach. As Clint walked over and gave her a hand. There was actually a talking raccoon Nerta said. As the kids left his side. Laura laughed and how exactly did it move his mouth in a way that made it form. This left Nerta hanging as he couldn't explain how Rocket could talk. Before he could say anything, Natasha peered out from the doorway. As she called out to Laura, the mashed potatoes are ready. Oh, thanks Nat, Laura said, as she shifted her gaze between Naruto and Natasha. As Naruto was frozen for a split second awkwardly say, Hey Natasha. It was then that she noticed his present at the bottom of the stairs. As she blinked several times, as she gave a small glare towards Laura and Clint. As Clint quickly turned his head, as Laura smiled. Hey Naruto, Natasha said. Are you here for dinner too? Yeah, that was the only thing Naruto could think to say. But the awkward was cut off as Lila grabbed Naruto by the hand. Uncle Naruto, come sit with me, she said. Thank God, Nerta said in his mind. Okay, okay, I'm coming, he said, as she pulled him into the house. As he was being pulled, he saw a raven bird landing on the porch. It had a glowing green eye. 
as it seemed like he was looking straight into his soul as he couldn't pay any more attention because he was pulled into the house. Some time later, on one side sat Naruto and Natasha with Lila sitting between them on the other side was the other three. In between bites, Laura looked towards Naruto. So, how is it? Naruto smiled as he swallowed. I love it, he said. Laura smiled back as she was pleased that her guest was enjoying her cooking. As Clint gave Naruto a sudden nod. Well, Laura said, I can't take all the credit. Yeah, said Lila. Auntie Nat, help. Mommy created it. Really? Naruto said. The attention now on Natasha, she looked up, mid-bite. As she swallowed her food. I didn't help out that much, she said. Since when do you cook, Clint asked. Won't get an elbow jab from his wife. I don't, she said. She helped cut out the potatoes. She mashed them too, said Lila. She was very helpful, Laura said. As Naruto could only smile, as Natasha was bombarded with questions about when she could cook. I didn't realize you became such a good cook, he said. You know I can't cook, she said. Remember the homemade ramen I tried to make for you? Yeah, I remember, Naruto said the laugh. You totally butchered it. I can't remember laughing for so long. It didn't help that you kept laughing at me, she said. And the cake I tried to make for your birthday, remember that? Yeah, how exactly do you burn the icing again, Naruto said. I thought you put it on and then cook, she said. Careful, Naruto, said Kurama in Naruto's head. As Naruto was brought back to realization, as he noticed Laura was smiling at the both of them, as she pretended not to watch. Yeah, those were good times, Naruto said. The place got a little tense as everyone entered an awkward silence as he started to eat. Cooper then spoke, so Naruto, you gonna be an adventure now that you're back? Oh no, Naruto said, I'm not. Why, Lila said. Well, you see, as Naruto think of a reason. When I was a kid, I had this one friend that called himself an avenger. He was about your age, Naruto said, looking to Lila, when someone took his family away. When someone took them away from him. And he was about your age, he said, looking to Cooper, when he left an abandoned home. The avenger thing he lost. He did a lot of bad things to do that, all because he was an avenger. So I guess the idea of calling myself an avenger makes me feel bad. Oh, Lila said quietly. What happened to your friend? Oh, Nerda said. He passed away. Did he ever became your friend again, Cooper said. As Nerda smiled sadly. Yeah, I would like to think so, he said. Seeing that her children finished your plates, Laura cut through the tension. Why don't you guys take your dishes to the sink and wash up? Though they didn't look very pleased, they quickly complied with their mother and got up. They've both gotten so big, Nurka said, as they left the room. Well, it's been three years since you last saw them. They really missed you, Lila especially. You're her favorite superhero, you know? Action figures and everything. I am sorry I didn't come by sooner. I should have visited at least once. I just... You are busy, I know, Laura said. What's important is that you're here now. Clint then spoke. Did you really meet a talking raccoon, he asked. Time skip. Naruto was on the porch as he watched. Clint threw the ball to Lila and Cooper with complete accuracy each time. As both of them threw it with surprising accuracy as well. But Clint caught it every time. Did he teach them how to do that? Or are they just as freaky as their dad Naruto said? A bit of both Natasha said as she was sitting down on the porch. But I would say Lila is the more natural of the two. If they don't watch out they will have a lady Hawkeye in their hands. Naruto got off the railing slowly. As he walked over and took a seat next to Natasha. You can sit here and pretend to look at the sunset for as long as you want. But you and I both know that's not what you're looking at, Naruto said. What, what are you talking about, said Natasha. As Naruto motioned towards the kids, I see how you look at them. I think anyone that knows you know that that is what you want. She then turned towards him and if you know me, you know that I can't have it. Then let me heal you, Naruto said. Naruto, but she was cut off. I never offered it to you before because I know you needed to ask me. If I had asked, you would have said no, no matter how much you actually wanted me to. So I backed off and gave you space, Nerta said. As she went silent for a few seconds, she then spoke, why would you do that for me? If it's pity or something, but Nerta cut her off. I'm not doing it out of pity or anything stupid like that. I'm doing it because of that look I was talking about. You try and hide it, but after everything we've been through. I can read you like a book. And it's because of everything. I know you won't ask me because you think you don't deserve it. That you don't deserve to have that happiness. She wiped her eye. I don't deserve it. Not after everything with you. Not after everything at all. I'm a monster, she said. You're wrong, Nerta said. I've seen monster. I've seen the worst of the worst. 
and you're nothing, completely nothing like them. You're like at least 10 tiers below that, Nurka said, giving her a joking smile at the last part. Natasha couldn't help but laugh as the two sat there for a moment enjoying each other's company. I thought you said you were done with me, she said. Yeah, I did, Nurka said. I guess you can call it a timeout if you want, he said with a shrug. And how many of these timeouts do I get, she said, her voice taking on hope. I'll burn that bridge when I get there, he said. They enter another silence before Natasha said. Just let me think about it, she said. At that, the door opened behind them. Hey, Nurka, are you sure? Oh, am I interrupting something? Laura asked, looking down at the both of them as they sat together on the steps. Nurka got up. What you need, he said. Are you sure you don't want to stay the night? We have an like, extra guest room, so it isn't a bother. Nah, thank you, I'm good. I'm actually be heading out, Nurka said. As she walked forward. Oh, okay, she said, with a little disappointment in her tone, as she held out her arms for a hug. I'm hoping that you come back, she said. How can I not, Nurka said, hugging her. After that amazing dinner. Maybe next time we will watch a parent trap, and you can pick up some tips, he whispered in her ear. As he leaned back, she gave him a kiss on the cheek, as she patted the part that she kissed. We will do that then, she said. Walking down the steps, Nurka called out. Hey kids, I'm heading out. No, Lila said as she rushed over as she grabbed his leg in a dead grip. You can't leave now, you just got here. As Nurka patted her head softly. I promise I'll come back, he said. You promise, she said, hugging his leg even tighter. Promise of a lifetime, Nurka said as he slowly peeled her off of him. As he leaned down and gave her one last hug. As he gave Cooper a fist bump. I'll be seeing you later, kid. Could you show me how to throw those knives? Cooper asked, hopefully. As Nurka saw Laura giving him a look that only a rightful mother could. N no kid, Nurka said. Knives are dangerous. Wait till you're older, he whispered. As Laura looked away, as the kid gave Nurka a wink. As Nurka reached up to his ship as he waved everyone goodbye. They went inside. You can come out now, Nurka said. As suddenly a raven bird landed beside him. You've been following me since Wakanda. Who are you? He said. But guys, be any episode right here. If you want to see next part, if you already know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends and social media platform. But for now, I'm out. Peace.